Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at painting 6mm British Line Infantry from the American War of Independence. Uh, these figures are from back of 6mm or 6mm. Um, they come in little four man strips like this, you normally get about 96 dudes per pack for a good value. And they are cast in white metal. So I've already primed these in surface primer grey from Falejo. And now we're going to start working based on our colours. Now I know this scale kind of frightens a lot of people and understandably so it is very small however they're not as difficult as one may think to paint so we're going to begin with the the little base that they come on so I'm going to take some Flejo flat earth and I'm going to paint that in now because um, this can be one of the trickiest things to get right if you have to come back and do it again as the chances of painting over detail you've painted in is quite high <laughs> painted in, now we're going to start working on the uniforms. Uh, the uniforms for the British Line Infantry at this era is basically a scarlet red for their tunics and a very light woolen grey uh, for their trousers. Their bright core, or should I say their tricores, are going to be like um, a black or a dark grey, kind of like a panzer grey would also work quite well for this colour. And the drummer's meter, meter cap, which is the real distinctive headdress, it's going to be painted in as yellow because they were normally quite bright and vibrant. So we're going to start blocking in our main colours. For the tunics, I'm going to use a watered down coat of Citadel in the fist in red. Tunics are painted in. It looks a bit messy right now, but uh, we're going to start painting in details in a few moments once it's been allowed to dry. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to start painting in their headgear, which is their um, tricores and their the meter cap for the drummer. And for that, I'm just going to use flat black. And I'm also going to switch to a relatively narrow brush. In this case, I'm going to be using a zero. tricores painted in and then for the drummer's meter cap I'm going to paint that in with Citadel Sandry Desert which is a very nice yellow ochre colour. I don't want to go to a flat yellow um, I might highlight it up to that colour but not as a, a base coat that'll be just a little bit too intense for our needs and when I'm at it I'm also going to paint in the pole arms so the surgeon's half pike which is the ceremonial weapon of the sergeants of this era right up to the time of Napoleon, especially in the British Army. Paint that in. As well. And I'm going to do the same for the flagpoles that the two standard bearers are holding. Now these can be a little bit tricky to paint, but take your time. And see, all we're really doing with this scale is blocking in the main colours. Because, bear in mind, like this is the equivalent as 1 to 300 scale. So, when you're playing with these on the board or whatever, or on your shelf, the human eye cannot see a lot of this, so you're just trying to pick out the most prominent features. And unfortunately, I kind of painted over one of the meter caps, so I have to come back and clean that in a few moments. So it's too busy talking. <laughs> okay. 
So the trick is, take your time, always keep an eye on where the tip of your brush is, it's quite important, it's very easy to kind of just paint and not really be aware where your brush um, strokes are going, especially in this scale. So I kind of missed, I kind of got the, the Sandry Desert a little bit where I didn't want it to, so I'm going to come back and clean all that shortly. And I'm also going to paint in, like I mentioned, the drummer's meter cap. If you do that from time to time with this scale, go back and clean up your work. And the, it's already beginning to take shape quite nicely. Now I'm going to paint in the flesh. And for that, I'm going to be using Scissordale Layer Paint Best of Flesh, which is this lovely, rich uh, colour. And again, turning down our paint on our wet palette. So now we're going to come in and paint the faces. Not that difficult, just keep your paint somewhat thin and tap that colour in. The wash will give this definition when we put it on. Now we're going to paint in the trousers, which I'm going to use um, Vallejo Neutral Grey, which is my kind of go-to um, kind of wool in colour. Again, tin our paints down. I'm also going to paint in the sashes that they're wearing in white as well, so I'm using our grey colour to base that. So, the sergeant's sash, actually I think they all have sashes, so I'm going to tin down my paint a bit more, make sure there's not too much paint on my brush, and paint in the sashes. Again, I'm sorry if you guys can't see this, but uh, it's a little bit hard to film, um, figures are small, but we can give it our best go. There we go. Nice and simple. I'm also going to paint in the wig of the drummer. So often these wear like a, a weird kind of judge's style of wig. Like a ceremonial job I believe, it's a bit weird but sure. The British Army have a lot of tradition. Again, and like maneuver um, the models to any way you can to make painting these easier. Don't be scared to put them at funny angles. Now I can't really do like uh, paint these as I would normally because then you guys wouldn't be able to see it because I'd be pulling it away from the camera. And there we have our white details painted in. Again, this won't be 100% perfect. However. It's just enough to add a bit of colour and a bit of difference to the models, which is important. Okay, I'm going to keep moving. So now we're going to move on to the drum. Now I was going to paint the drum a yellow colour, but with his meter cap being the colour it is, I don't want to use a, um, a yellow, it would be too, too strong a colour. And it'll also make the model look boring. So I'm going to switch to a blue, so I'm going to use um, Army Painter Deep Blue, however any blue shade you have will do. Um, drums often would vary from colour depending from what regiment they belong to. And yeah, there we go, just paint it in. Now, I tend this paint down quite a bit so it actually behaves a bit like a wash, just goes straight into the area I'm painting. And I'm not too concerned if I'm not entirely sure where the drum ends and where his trousers begin. Because bearing in mind, anyone viewing this is going to be some distance away. And they're not going to know either, so it's the the beauty of six mil. And there is his drum painted in. So now what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to paint in the spear point 
of the half pike and for that I'm going to use Vallejo uh, Model Air Aluminium for a nice bright colour. Um, some people don't like using bright uh, metallics for this scale, I however do because it draws attention and that's what we want. Um, and that's the same with um, the rifle or musket, uh, the muzzles of rifles or muskets. I often paint them a very bright silver or uh, aluminium type of colour um, because it kind of replicates the bayonets that would have been fixed in real life. And then for the um, for the actual um, flagpoles, I'm going to be using Vallejo Game Color Brassy Brass. Just to add it, just break it up a little bit differently because these aren't really meant to be spears, but just kind of decorations more than anything else. Now, I don't have any flags in this tutorial, unfortunately, but we will have them in future six more jobs. There we have it. Nice and quick, not too crazy. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to allow all this to dry. We're going to place down our wash, and then we're going to do our basic highlights, and then we can call this tutorial finished. So now I'm going to start adding depth to these little miniatures, and for that I'm going to be going to my tried and tested Agrat's Earthshade. have our fig figures washed. I'm going to allow this to dry for about 30 to 40 minutes and once it's dry to the touch we can start building up our final layers of highlights which isn't that intense. We're just going to be picking out some of the more um, noticeable areas and we'll be doing the white trim on their bright cores or tri cores should I say. Okay welcome back. So we're just going to put in our final highlights on these little dudes. So I'm just going to highlight some of their their tunics and I'm actually just going to use a little bit of Vallejo Scarlet Like their sashes with a little bit of a uh, Vallejo model game off white. Now I'm going to do the tricky part, <laughs> so we'll see what happens here. So I'm going to try to paint in the white lining of their bright cores, or tri cores should I say, because the real helmets or hats had a white line. So I'm going to take my number zero brush like so, and I'm going to take away the excess paint, and I am going to run the edge of my brush over the top of the hat. Like so. Nice and simple. And again, just over the, the long of my brush, over the edge of the hat. And here as well. So there we have it.
this is a very quick and easy way to get a tabletop stander for 6mm. You don't have to go any further than this unless you really want to. Here are my little red coats ready to take to the field. So thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.